Hi everyone, I'm Maria Bartiromo and this is the Business of Innovation. Can you ask somebody what they really want? This is Marketing 101. Ask your customers what you want. It has to be the wrongest move there is. I can only imagine the day they were inventing cell phones. Would you like to have a cell phone, sir? No, that sounds stupid. What do I need it for? My regular phone is good enough. Don't listen to what your customers say. Watch what they do. Watch people's behavior. See what they do in real life. Observation is everything. Let's put some of these thoughts to our CEOs, which again include some of the world's brightest business leaders. Whatever it is, eBay seems to offer it, and company president Meg Whitman is the it businesswoman of today. Loaning money to people who have nothing may not sound like a smart business model, but Vikram Akula is doing just that and turning conventional wisdom on its head. Dick Posey knows a thing or two about your morning shower as president and CEO of Moan Incorporated. Roger has been saying that customers don't actually know what they want. What do you think about using your customers to actually innovate? Because what if they don't know that they necessarily need something? Let me give you a very brief story. Back in 1999, people listed on eBay die-cast cars. You know those little cars? Mm -hmm. And um, one day, we saw them listing real cars on eBay. And I remember it very clearly. Our head of strategy came in and said, Meg, they're listing real cars on eBay. And I said, they are not listing real cars on eBay. But sure enough, there was a Ferrari and a Jag, and we built eBay Motors, which is now our largest category on eBay. It's, it's difficult for companies, it's, uh, you know, especially companies that have, that have been successful. This is the innovator's dilemma, right? things work and you want to keep going and I think it is smaller companies newer companies the eBay's other companies that are brand new in the market which will cause these types of questions to be asked and then change the way business is being done because some people they're afraid they're shy they don't want to necessarily say really what's on their mind which is one of the reasons we use this ethnographic research because it allows us to watch how the consumers are interfacing with the products so for example in the showering research we've done uh, we came away with a couple key insights and it was simply by watching what was going on. But you have a situation where you have an existing product and you're, you can examine how people use that existing product. And I think that's wonderful. It's a great thing to do. But it doesn't get you to the next step. And the next step would be, suppose they didn't want showers at all. How would you find that out? <laughs> to help us figure it out, we've brought in some experts who know what customers want and how to get your organization to listen. I'm joined by Jane Buckingham. Jane is president of Youth Intelligence. Jane publishes the leading trend forecasting product, the Cassandra Report. Eric Von Hippel. Eric is one of the foremost experts on user-centered innovation and is the head of the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Group at MIT Sloan School of Management. And I'm also joined by Derek Cheshire. Derek is a UK-based innovation expert and author. Eric, you've said that user innovation has always been around, but the difference now is that people can no longer deny that it's happening. Tell me what you mean. When you study where innovations come from, what we find is that in most cases, they actually come from users. Now, these are not your ordinary customers. These are what you call lead users. They're ahead of the trend totally. So if you think, for example, about mountain bikes, they were not developed by manufacturers of bikes. They were developed by users who wanted to get out of mountains. Jane, you seem to always measure the temperature of pop culture and advise companies on what's hot. How do you use the user in terms of doing that? You find that customers get restless with what's out there. They want something new, so they try to create it themselves. Consumers create mashups in music. They're the ones who are creating the fun new videos. So usually it is the consumer who's creating something new and different, and then it's the companies who then try to make money off of it. If creating new products for new customers is one way businesses can innovate, then you can find no better example than this. I want my MTV. Before Tom Preston helped create that campaign at MTV, what teenager knew they needed music television? And after that, what teenager could live without it? You are involved in the Red campaign. Well, I'm doing some work with them. I really got to give the credit to Bono and Bobby Shriver, who came up with this idea a few years ago, where basically you, go, you will go to iconic brands like Apple, like The Gap, like Converse, like Motorola, like American Express, and say, you create red branded products. And the consumer will know that a portion of these profits will go to the global fund, which in turn will go to these villages in Africa. It's off and running and, and, and really uh, has the capability and potential of generating hundreds of millions of dollars in, in the most creative way. The nice thing about this is you have an example of someone actually caring about people. Yeah. I like to see companies that are involved with critical issues like finance start to seriously care about their customers.
Once upon a time, there was this idea, one of those proverbial big ideas. An idea so big that it needed help making the leap between possibility and reality. This big idea, it's your idea. Now who's going to help you make it real? And for more information on our programs, go to innovation.cnbc.com for videos, transcripts, and more.